Wow. Hey guys, Mark Holmes here. And as always, thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. Um, yeah, Jerry Jones. You know, it's Tuesday. It's not It's not only Taco Tuesday. It's Jerry Tuesday. We're Jerry Jones. Now, we got Stephen Jones, who he, he does the, the Monday show. And now, of course, Jerry does the Tuesday show. Yesterday, Stephen Jones has basically said yesterday, hey, Mike McCarthy's coming back. You know, there's no doubt and stuff on that. We heard this last week. You know, they said there may be some changes that are made. But, you know, after seeing the capabilities of our team against that juggernaut, the Cincinnati Bengals, they decided, no, we're, we're right where we go. Jerry Jones is always great for sound bites and quotes. He's great for that. You know, you've got the good old, I don't have bad time. I don't have time for a bad time. It ain't on my schedule. You know, we had the one with him, you know, where, where if you don't know your own anatomy and you're in a car wreck and you sever your arm, you know, if you don't know your anatomy, you go running out in the woods and you bleed to death. But the man, the educated man knows to put a tourniquet on there and, and wait for help. All right, that's something like that. But you, you get what I'm saying. So Jerry Jones now has been asked the same question about Mike McCarthy and so on. And he said, I can't believe there's any meat on this question about Mike McCarthy coming back. He said, I can't imagine a world where Mike McCarthy isn't our coach. So I don't, don't, I don't, I, I, I'm going by memory here, but it was something to that effect that he can't imagine the team without Mike McCarthy as their coach. Does this feel like deja vu with Jason Garrett? You know Jason Garrett, he's the right guy. We understand Jason Garrett has some shortcomings and some things that don't work out right, but we believe in Jason Garrett, and it's hard for me to imagine anybody else coaching the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm not saying that Mike McCarthy is the right guy or the wrong guy. I, I, the, it's, you can't judge this season in totality. Although you can look and there's some things that you kind of question. And maybe that's because of the position that they're put in. Maybe there's a sense of desperation, which is why you punt the ball on your 25 yard line. That maybe you think that you'll surprise the team and get a spark. OK, you know, it's one of those against all odds, you know, that we're going to get something to happen. It's kind of like um, after Pearl Harbor and all of our battleships are sunk that, you know, we kind of do a Hail Mary with the four aircraft carriers that we have going after the Japanese at Midway Island and surprise them. Because in all reality, that was punting. I mean, fake punting on your 24 yard line because you literally risked everything because had the Japanese found those carriers and sank them, we might all be speaking Japanese right now. So I get that maybe because you didn't have Dak, because you didn't have Lyle Collins, because you didn't have Tyron Smith, okay, because you ended up losing um, uh, Blake Jarwin, you know, because you were down to your four-string tackle um, that you looked at and, and Zeke Elliott just couldn't get going that maybe you were looking for a spark and that's why you would take more chances saying, what do we got to lose? Maybe that's the case. Maybe when you have Dak Prescott and you got an offensive line that's there and a healthy Zeke Elliott and your offense is rolling and maybe your defense is actually able to stop, you don't take those risks because you don't need to. That may be the case with Mike McCarthy. It may be. And it may be that, you know, we had Kellen Moore staying and calling the plays and implementing the offense that we had before because, uh, like we learned on the defense, there wasn't enough time to implement everything that you want to on the offense. You figured out 
we're better off doing what we know that we know how to do because we can execute those things as opposed to putting new things in the mix, kind of like with Ben DiNucci, where we tried all these gadget plays, and I'm sure that they hardly ever practiced before that week. That may be the case. And when you get Dak Prescott back and you realize there's a lot of things he can do that, you know, some people can't. That Amari Cooper is, is a legitimate receiver, consistent. You know, that Michael Gallup and CD will have some time and stuff on there. And we have a defense that doesn't give up 30 points a game that you will be able to coach. Because it's kind of like Norv Turner. Was Norv Turner an offensive genius? Or was his job made a lot easier because he had the Great Wall of Dallas? He had, you know, Emmett Smith in his heyday. He had Troy Aikman, an accurate passer. He had a Michael Irvin, and he had a number one defense in the NFL. You know, basically, you know, you can dial up almost anything and it worked because they can't cover all the bases. It makes your job easier. When you have difficulties or it's a close and it's a chess match, and stuff, that's where the coaching becomes the difference. We weren't in enough games with the talent that we had on the field to be able to use that ability. But again, we'll have to wait and see. And, you know, we know that we're going to get another year of Mike McCarthy. The real question is, is and, and, and understand, I look at a head coach like a CEO. You know, the CEOs of most companies don't understand how you manufacture something, how, you know, how the sausage is made, so to speak. But their job is to come up with a product or a theme, the thing that we're going to do, the vision. And what you do as that CEO is you put those people that do know how to make that sausage. You get a guy that's got a great sausage rep, re recipe. You get a guy that's good with logistics on how to best put the stuff together. You get a guy who can acquire the right pork. And so you get these guys. I'm not the one that's going to go out there and, 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 and go, go find the hogs. I'm not going to be the one that's grinding the sausage. I'm not going to be the guy that's coming up with the recipe. I'm going to be the guy that gets the big bucks and says, make sure you, 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 and you know what your job is and your role is and how to do it. And see, that's what you need is Mike McCarthy to do that. So you have to decide what are those guys that know how to make the sausage. And that's where we got to look at the defense. We got to first have a vision. Are we a 3-4 defense or are we a 4-3? Because if you're going to change up defenses, you need your, your, your pork acquiring guy to acquire the right kind of pork for that sausage. And then you need that guy that knows how to mix that 3-4 or 4-3 defense with that sausage. Because ultimately, that's the job of the head coach. That to make sure that the team is motivated, the team is prepared, but to be that visionary. Um, I'm, I haven't been that one of the guy that wants my head coach to be calling the plays per se. I want that guy to oversee every bit of what's going on. Have that vision, but have a guy that his whole thing, his whole focus from the kickoff until the whistle blows is nothing but what is the next play we're going to do. That's what I want to see. Now, we'll see. You know, a lot of people are saying, fire Kellen Moore. Well, quite frankly, until Dak Prescott got hurt, we were one of the highest scoring teams in the NFL. And that was with the injuries that we had. We score enough points to win games if we have a defense that can just do just a little bit. So that's my deja vu moment here in Jerry Jones talking about how he can't envision anybody else coaching the Cowboys. Wow. Okay. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, since the pandemic hit, um, my wife has been working from home since March, since March and got issues with the computer that the upgrade 
So she needed to come in to exchange computers and things. And it's been so long, I think she forgot how to get here. In fact, this is only the second time since March that she's actually been at her office because they've had, for, for the most part, the building closed. It's amazing how much has changed in a year. Makes you wonder if things will ever go back to where they were. Don't know. It's crazy. All right. Peace out, y'all.